The floor places me at another must move where I'm dealt 7 5 of clubs on the button. I raised to 30. I can't seem to get anything through. The big blind 3 bets to 120. If I were getting 3 bet by the small blind, I could reasonably call with plenty of suited connector combinations, even some 1 and 2 gappers. The big blind has less incentive to 3 bet me light since there's no one left to act behind him. He can call with a wide variety of hands because he's getting a good price and closing the action. With these things in mind, a 3 bet from the big blind should be taken more seriously, and as the initial preflop raiser, I need to be calling 3 bets with a narrower range. That's solid advice for you guys, but I always carry an imaginary 8 ball with me to help make decisions in these kind of spots. I ask it if I'm going to win this hand, and it answers with, of course bro. So I call for 90 more with a hand that I shouldn't ordinarily be going to battle with. We're heads up in position, the flop comes jack 9-4 with 2 clubs, we've got a flush draw and a backdoor straight draw. The big blind slows down and checks. Maybe he has air, or maybe he's like TI and just puts out trap after trap. I check to see a free card. The turn is another jack. The big blind checks once more. Now I think it's a lot less likely that I'll be up against a hand with much value. I've only got one more shot to hit a flush. If I don't, I doubt 7 high would be good. I bet 100 is a semi bluff. I'll have some strong hands like trip jacks that I play this way, and I may play 10s, 8s, and 9-8 this way as well. I mostly want to get rid of his air, but if he calls, I can still hit clubs. In that case, I'll be able to win a bigger pot. After 30 seconds, the opponent folds. Finally, something works out for us. This isn't even that large of a pot. Still, it feels nice to get the bluff through and a hand with more chips than we started with. That could change as we look down at ace-king suited in the hijack. I haven't been playing too long, but it's still my first premium holding of the day, and it came at a great time. I raised a 30. The cutoff, small blind, and big blind all call. We're going four ways to the flop. It comes king 7-3 with two clubs. We've got top top and a backdoor flush draw. This is the kind of hand that I was hoping for, where I've got something strong enough to bet multiple streets. Maybe I can take down a medium sized pot and restore some confidence since it's currently wearing thin. Checks to me, I'm going for value, I bet 90. This is on the larger side, with some draws out there and multiple opponents, there's a decent chance for me to get called by worse. The cutoff folds, small blind six with the theme of the session, and puts in the check raise to 330. Wow. Nothing's coming easy for me, there really isn't that much out there, it's unlikely that he'd have a two pair combination, so he's basically only repping a set of sevens or threes. The big blind folds, I don't get the sense that I have the winner, but I feel like a complete idiot if I fold and it turns out the small blind is making this play with a draw of some sort, or perhaps a worse king. I have one of the strongest hands that I'll ever have, and I at least have a backdoor draw to the nuts. I call for 240 more, it's down to heads up, an ace king or heart would be great, the dealer puts out the six of spades and said, the action's on the small blind. He's got a question for me. Uh, let's see here. About a little over nine. My mind feels like it's getting scrambled right now. I seem to keep running into huge hands. The unfortunate thing is that this is the best hand that I've had. That doesn't matter. I could be drawing dead. I like to avoid that type of situation if possible. It doesn't seem like I'm getting bluffed. I make a disciplined fold, and we'll never know if it was correct or not because the opponent doesn't care about vlog viewers at all. That's him, man. You win. Want to show for the vlog or no? No. All right. I'll get you another round. Tried. Tried. I get completely rejected by this guy. Well, at least at first. He got the tap on the shoulder to go to the main game. Since he's leaving anyway, he's more willing to share whether or not we made the right lay down. What'd you have there? Fuck the seven. All right, so you had a set? Yes, sir. You got me, you got me. Getting wrecked right now. The fold saved me the rest of my stack. A half hour later, we get involved again, this time with ace four suited. We're in the cutoff, I raised to 30. The button calls, the big blind also calls. We're going three ways to the flop. It comes ace eight eight rainbow, not bad for us. The big blind checks, it's a multi-way pot and I'm probably way ahead or way behind. I don't think a bet of mine will get called by too many worse hands, so I check. The button doesn't want to let anyone see a free card. He bets 40. The big blind folds. I checked partially to give one of my opponents the opportunity to bluff. I'm not going to fold at this juncture. I call. It's down to heads up. The turn is the 10 of hearts. I check once more. Again, the button reaches for chips. He bets 130. I liked it better when he was betting 40. My kicker doesn't even play, and if I hit a 4, it's not going to help me since there are already two 8s out there. I really only have a bluff catcher. Since I played this passively, I don't feel right giving up yet. I call to see how the river plays out. The dealer puts out the six of spades. I check. We're not gonna get the showdown cheaply today. The button bets 370. 
He's doing this for value. I beat absolutely none of his hands. The main bluff that I can think of that he could have would be something like Queen Jack that turned a gutter and break the river. I'm not entirely sure he'd try to bluff multiple opponents on the flop with that either. He probably just has it like everyone else has against me today. I fold. This time, we really never find out if it was the correct decision or not. I'm getting tired of having to make laydowns. I'm not sure that I have any more folds left in me. In this one, we've got ace three suited in middle position. We're gonna play it. I raise the 30, the hijack calls. He's the one who beat me in the previous hand. The button calls. He's the guy who beat me with pocket kings twice this session and said that he was my nemesis. Nearly everyone at the table has the story of how they beat me today. Small blind also calls. We're going four ways to the flop. It's ace queen six rainbow. We've got top pair and a backdoor flush draw. The small blind checks. I check for pot control. The hijack bets 50. The button calls. Then the small blind calls. I consider giving up because it's pretty likely that at least one of the other three players has me in bad shape. Since it's not a huge bet and I can improve with a lot of cards on the turn, I stick around for one call. There's still four of us. The turn is the deuce of clubs. We pick up the flush draw. Small blind checks. I check. The hijack doesn't want to bet after getting three colors on the previous street. He checks. Seemingly out of nowhere, the button bets 210. It's a bit odd to me that he just called on the flop, but now that the deuce has come out, he feels confident enough in his hand to bet with three opponents who have shown interest already. Small blind calls, sweetening the pot odds for me. I can't go anywhere with a pair and a draw to the nuts. I call. There's a small chance that my pair by itself could be good. The hijack folds. It's down to three of us. The river is the nine of diamonds. It's disappointing because I was hoping that this was our chance to win a big pot and maybe even get unstuck. The small blind checks. I check. The button bet's 420. I really wanted to get the showdown for free one time, but nope. Small blind folds. This is another situation in which my hand has some value, but I'm only bluff catching. It's very similar to the previous hand, except there's even less of a chance that the opponent is bluffing here because multiple players called on the flop and turn. It's usually a bad idea to try and bluff on the river when that's the case. At this point in the session, it's hard for me to fathom people having it against me this often, yet we have no evidence to suggest otherwise. The fact that this player only called the flop bet, then bet the turn and river himself, without much changing, just seems really strange to me. The deuce on the turn shouldn't have improved many of his hands, and the well for me folding has completely dried up. I don't necessarily think that I've got the best hand, but I can't keep letting hands go, and you can hear it in my voice as I make my decision. The opponent has ace two soft suit. The turn indeed helped him out by giving him top and bottom pair. It makes sense given how the hand was played. This has been a brutal day for me. I can't get anything going at all. I'm stuck 2300 after making my first undisciplined call. I'm upset with myself for not getting away from it on the river. I get switched to the main game and add on for a thousand, where I pick up ace 10 offsuit in the small blind. It's a straddle pot. I just got to this table and I'm on my phone to start this hand, which is why the camera footage is a little late to the action. Let me catch you up. Typically, I would have raised from the small blind with this hand, but I didn't want to draw a lot of attention to myself getting off the phone and putting in a raise, so I actually call for 20. The big blind calls for 10 more. The under the gun straddler raises to 100. It's unlikely that he's going to have a better hand than I will. This appears to be a play to pick up my $20 and the big blinds. Because I initially under my hand and I have good card removal, I 3-bet to 370. The big blind folds. Under the gun isn't having any of my shenanigans. He 4-bet jams and has me covered. After everything else that has gone on in the last two and a half hours, this is super frustrating. I've run into monster after monster. Maybe the under the gun player actually has something. Or maybe he's just making a move on me since I played my hand somewhat strange by limp 3-betting. If I fold, I'll be down about 2,700. If I call and win, I'll only be down around 800. I've got to be due for some luck, and if I call and happen to lose an additional 1,200, that just feels like a drop in the bucket. I'm tired of folding, and I'm at the end of my rope. Bucket, bucket call. Let's go once. Brad's tired of it. <laughs> There's nothing I want less than a chopped pot. I want to either win this and get closer to the even mark, or lose so I can escape the session from hell. We're going one time for all of it. The flop comes a6-4 rainbow, we've got top pair, and are beating all the Broadway pocket pairs aside from the one combination of aces that's unaccounted for. I'm feeling good, at least until the opponent turns over ace-king offsuit and has me completely destroyed. The turn is a jack, we've got three outs for the win. The river is another jack, the deck doesn't care if we're due. I lose a huge pot that I didn't have to, and normally wouldn't have if I wasn't on tilt. Very good. Uh, nice time. The good news is that I've been put out of my misery. 
The bad news is that all these chips in front of me are going to a new home and there will be no cash out clip in today's episode. 